But I wanted to talk a little bit before we had a discussion about the Electoral College because it figured so hugely in the last election that Trump won and by the Electoral College rules. But I want to talk about it because about its racist origins because this is each semester we're going to try to do something in honor of Roz Payne and do a Roz Payne talk, film, something. Let me just say I was out in Richmond and I saw Sierra and I yeah. gave her the, the flyer, but she has uh, bronchitis. Uh-huh. She often has it in the She doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> and when we did the memorial service for Ross Payne, um, we did raise a little money, and so this is what we decided to do with that little money is to have a Ross Payne event about race every semester. So, right. like, and spend a hundred dollars on good food. Hey, we forgot that part of it. <laughs> we didn't. We weren't supposed to pay. Well, what are we going to? Okay. Anyway, so, um, but That's free. That's free. That's free. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, I just, I thought this semester because it's coming up with the election in November that maybe we should. I don't think people much are talking about the issues of the election. Most of it centers on the rotten personality of Donald Trump. And while I agree with that, I just think there's more going on, and we should talk about other things other than how bad he is. And here's Donna, including voting rights violations and um, gerrymandering. Yeah, we should talk about that tonight. We, but maybe you could bring it up a little bit, uh, even after we talk about a little bit about the electoral college. That is the way he got elected last time as well, yeah. right? Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Um, okay, so where did it, I think we should talk about it in terms of where it originated, and maybe other people know this more than I think they know it. Does everybody know how it originated? Uh, the, the electoral college. What? The electoral college. Yeah. Sort of. Started here. It is in here, but it's really obtuse. It's very obscured in here. It comes out of the Constitution. Just a point of information, not that it matters. Was that the topic for tonight, the Electoral College? Yes. Wasn't the Electoral College two weeks coming up from today? I'm all mixed up. Okay. You want the flyer? There's me on TV. All mixed up. Okay. Okay. Here. I, I'm mixed up with the dates. I got it. Thank you. I'll take the floor. <laughs> so, I guess to preface what I'm going to say, I think this is really a brilliant document. Uh, many people, I think on the left and radicals in particular, think that this Constitution is worthless uh, because it has piles of contradictions in it. The biggest contradiction, really, is the Electoral College. But it has some real brilliance. It comes out of the Enlightenment, 1776, in which it was assumed that people could reason and that people should use their reason to make decisions and not basically religious, just accept religious authority. That's one of the reasons for the First Amendment and that the United States chose to separate church and state. It's because it was felt in the 18th century that it was about time that people could use their heads and their conscience rather than be, have accepted truths laid on them. So that's one of, the whole re one of the whole things about the brilliance, I think, of the Bill of Rights which I don't think any other constitution has as a Bill of Rights, which is freedom from government. The Bill of Rights says that the government can't intrude on you in certain ways. That's the first 10 amendments. But the Electoral College was basically the result of a compromise. Um, okay, so how did it arise? When the constitution was being discussed, there was a big discussion about, uh, for instance, what was going to make up, well, to start here, we'll start with the Congress. There was a big discussion about what was going to happen with the Senate and with the Congress. And if you all, all remember, how do we elect, how is it decided how many congressmen we have in general? It's based on population. population. The Senate is not based on population, but the Congress is. It was decided then that we, there was, had to be a census to determine how much each state had for congressmen. And I'll give you an example. Of course, Vermont was not in the original, Vermont joined after the Constitution. Vermont was an independent republic from about 1776 to 1791, about that period of time. Vermont was not really uh, there there at that point. So it had to be decided how the Congress, the House, was going, how many people were going to be in the House. And it was determined that it should be by population. Okay, so in the state, I'll, I'll just give you an example, although Vermont wasn't involved in the time. 
it was, there had to be a census at that time to decide how many people were in each state and therefore how many congressmen they were going to have. So the whole idea of the Electoral College arises out of the census and around population. Mm -hmm. So the, there were two political positions on this question of population. Um, and it, it had to do with counting the people within the United States. That people had, had simply the ones who had been here, that were here in the United States at that time. That, was be, that became the most controversial debate of the Constitutional Convention. And it split, as most arguments at that time split, between a northern position and a southern position. There were not political parties at that time, remember? There were no political parties. In fact, our founding fathers, I hate to call them that. What are we going to call them? The people who were at the origination of our republic felt that um, parties were bad, that parties were factions, and that they should, it should be warned against. But always, there were always factions and positions. They just weren't part of uh, the political, I guess, ambience at that time. But there always were also geographical positions because the North was way different than the South, right? Way different because of what? Same because of slavery. So the question about how many people lived in the United States at that time of the founding of the Republic was based on how you would count those people. So guess what? The Northern position was what? How would you count the population in order to get congressmen? What would their argument be? What? Those who were eligible to vote. No, no, nobody was eligible to vote. That had not been decided. It had not okay. been decided who was Free a citizen. People. Free people. Probably right. Anyone. The, the North argued that only free people should be counted. Okay? Now, why? You, I'm going to ask you again. Why was that so essential? Oh, only gosh. free people. Yeah. The South had a different position. What was the Southern position because of its plantation economy and because it had black people? Three fifths of the No, how would, what, they count would the be there? Count, count them all. all. Mm -hmm. Count every mm -hmm. single person. Why? I, this is a boy. For more people. Right, exactly. <laughs> and who then would have controlled the country? Mm -hmm. The South. Yeah. The South. Which is, that's what their constant refrain was. They had to be protected against northern majorities. The north really had the majority population, at least within cities. Remember, there were not very many big cities at the time. Of the north. <coughs> Whatever cities there were, though, largely were in the north. So they had piles of people in the north, but they were mainly white people. And slavery, by this point, had been abolished in many of the northern uh, states. Massachusetts abolished slavery right during the Revolution. Vermont wasn't in the Union, but slavery was very weak in the North, even though it had been legitimate at times, but it wasn't, the North was not a plantation economy, right? I mean, what was the Northern economy? Basically commercial. In some ways it was tied to slavery, but it wasn't like big pot, uh, plantations on which, you know, hundreds of uh, black people labored for nothing, right? So that was a crucial question. How are you going to uh, count the people and therefore who would control the Congress? So the Southern position was count every person. The Northern position, however, was count only free people. So it sounds like the North was saying, forget these black people, they don't count. But in the Northern position was taken, it was an anti-slave position. And they said, count every person, the South, no, they said, said count only free people, and the South counted, said count everybody. Which was a total contradiction in Southern terms, because black people were not considered persons in the first place. Yeah. You know, but on that, <laughs> they were always, the South always had hypocritical positions. I'm not saying that the North was perfect, but the South said, for instance, states' rights should dominate, right? Except that they favored the Fugitive Slave Act, which meant that the southern sheriff could be come up to the north with an affidavit and capture and return to the south um, 
uh, escaped slaves. So the South always had this position when they wanted federal power, that was great, but when they didn't want federal power, then they'd rely on states' rights and argue the states' rights argument. So, that, so how does that mean about the Electoral College? Do we all know what the Electoral, so that, this was crucial for representation in Congress and therefore representation in some kind of the presidency. So what is the Electoral College in the first place? I put it on the blackboard. The Electoral College is the sum of the two senators that each state has plus the number of congressmen. So you can see why that number is important. Vermont doesn't really count very much in the Electoral College because we only have one congressman. And why do we only have one congressman? We don't have a lot of people and never have, right? So Vermont has three. The only other state that has that few, I believe, is Wyoming. Do you know? I think it is Wyoming. What? And Wyoming really has very few people, but one of the things that Wyoming did to counter that was they allowed women to vote. They were the first state that allowed women to yeah, vote. Well, not, not no, 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 nobody voted then. I mean, it wasn't, this was a decision about how to count the votes and, there, and then who would vote and who wouldn't vote, but, and, and who would get the, num the largest number, so the large number of congressmen. You get it, right? So what was the result? Remember that this discussion in the in the Constitution in Philadelphia was what, very when heated. Was this? What you 17, 70, yeah. No, the con the Constitution was passed. When was the uh, here? Right. That's the, uh, uh, the Constitution. Constitution was passed in. No. I think it was seventeen. 87, I'm not certain. Okay, but we can see because here it is that it is signed September 25th, 17th. Those, those, the, 17, the Bill of Rights was 1789. Um, but that's the Bill of Rights. Here's the Constitution. And the, Constitution, the rest of the, well, anyway, so that's, then it was decided based on that, on that question about who would control the House. Um, 1787. Okay, 1787. But the, the revolution was over in 1781. So in the beginning, right after the uh, American Revolution, what governed this country, by the way? It wasn't this. It wasn't, it was the Articles of Confederation. How did they deal with that question? They didn't, I don't think. They didn't because they didn't, they voted, I guess, I'm not even certain there was. Oh, was there, was there even a president? No, there was no, under the Articles of Confederation, they gave great deal of power to each state. In fact, each state could have tariffs and borders and, and all that sort of stuff. And it did, of course, allow slavery because all of those questions were state questions, right? Um, and that's how it worked. The United States had a really good idea, I think, when it founded itself because of the Articles of Confederation say no president and no uh, capital, and it was very <clears throat> decentralized, and anarchists would have loved it, except for the question of slavery. And that was, that haunted every single question that came before the initial republic. So how did this work into the Electoral College? So then the decision became, how are we gonna elect the president of the United States, right? And it was determined by this fancy rule, and it was all to do with the population so that every big state with a lot of slaves wanted to elect the president through an electoral college, so they would control the electoral college. Because if you say Congress, the House, and the Senate equals the electoral vote, then it really means that the person or the states with the largest <coughs> Populations were going to control the Electoral College. And so the Electoral College was cooked up in a way. However, this was not, this had to have a compromise. Because the North argued count all free people. The South argued count all of the people. It, the South said, if you get your way North, we're going to leave. We don't have to sign this Constitution. It hadn't been signed yet. And so they said, if you go your way, Northerners, then we're going to leave. And you're not going to get your damn Constitution. 
So there had to be a compromise, which most people think is a terrible thing. But think about it if you were our first president. If the South had left, what would that have meant at that time? Remember that the biggest part of the country was the South. Where, is, where does the South begin? Where does it begin? Washington, D.C., really. Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore, yeah. yeah. Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah, it's it's right. really Pennsylvania. Look yeah. at it, look at it map upside down. Yeah, but Florida was shocking how big it is. It doesn't yeah. matter about Florida. What were we going to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 13 colonies. Look at the map upside down. It's shocking how big the South is. Before it goes yeah. Right, but then the yeah. South goes all the way to Baltimore. That's where the Mason-Dixon line is. That's right. right. Well, most, most of the, the South was part of the U.S. then. Yeah, a lot of the so South was. was. <laughs> a lot I know. Of yeah, yeah. Down to Georgia. Down, down to what Georgia. Was? Delaware. Right? Delaware was a slave state? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Delaware was a slave state. The Mason-Dixon line went right along Pennsylvania and Delaware, and everything below mm -hmm. that was, mm -hmm. was the South. Um, and the Ohio River, right? I mean, Ohio. Ohio was the north, but... Kentucky yeah, but Ohio was wasn't one of the 13 colonies. No, but as it went west. That's right. right, as it went west. So the cities also were mainly in the north, but they weren't very big. So the south actually had the largest <laughs> population, if you counted black people. So in the... Uh, com what was the compromise? And that was... What we, but I would just want to say about the north that that... The presidents, I guess, and everybody who was in the North really did not want the South to leave. Now, I want to ask you the consequences. If the South had left at that point, not signed the Constitution, what would have happened to the, the United States? This is a small, dinky little republic, just had won independence from the greatest empire on Earth, which is the English Empire at that time, the British Empire. What would have happened to the United States? Get taken back over by the it British. was going to get taken back over by the British. So, a com so you can think in terms of real politique, or you can think of maybe they shouldn't have compromised. But if that compromise hadn't been reached, that would, that's what people were thinking, that it would become a colony again of the British. Okay. So what was the compromise, which became the very famous compromise uh, of the Constitution? <clears throat> Three the three fifths rule, <clears throat> right? That's when it was decided we will count all uh, black people as three fifths of a person. Black well, men, I think. Uh, all, no, no, no. It had nothing to do with gender or rights. It had to do with race. It well, had to do with slavery. What the math on that must have been really? <laughs> you think about that. No, they just counted the population. A black population. Who had those statistics? Who had those statistics? You can do it on your computer. Who had those statistics? Nobody knows how to do it. They it had to be decided because of a census. A census was taken. When was that done? Right around the time that the Constitution was signed, in order to determine the Congress. Yeah, the census is in the Constitution. So, but if, they, if they accepted it. Yeah, but when did you do it? Sorry, what did I do? If both the North and the South accepted the three-fifths rule, yeah. why have an electoral college? Why not just do one person, one vote, or one person, three-fifths of a vote? I mean, how did it evolve from something fairly simple I, to I, the I, electoral I, college? I don't know. I don't know that exactly, except I do know. <laughs> I do know. I don't know why, except that that was the compromise. Uh -huh. I think initially the debate was, or the position was taken, that the president should be elected by the Congress. And Maybe then there were those that wanted universal, you know, uh, not, I was going to say universal suffrage. No, not, not by not, universal. Not, that's no. not it, no. That the, that the population should vote on, you know, the general population should vote. And so they Except decided. for, except for 51%, which are women. They don't count. <clears throat> exactly, they did not count, you're right. What were you going to say about Good old days. No, just, I mean, to determine that, that it wasn't a popular, that, that there, the popular vote was not a populist vote, wasn't what was wanted. What? Why wasn't it? Well, Why that, what you're saying is that that's not what, who wanted, they, who wanted there the, were people, there was a debate at the yeah, Congress instead of, how are we going to do it? People. Well, you got to remember, too, that that was a huge debate, whether or not you're going to have an upper house. There are places in this country, I think like Nebraska, who decided, why do we need a Senate? I agree with that. Why the hell do you need a Senate? You got basically the House 
is like a House of Commons. It's people. It's ordinary right. people. And the Senate, even in this country, smacks of aristocracy. It's not really aristocracy because it's not determined at birth the way that the House of Lords is. But it is the upper house. They're considered wiser than we are. They are considered people who can control their passions. We can't in the House. I mean, it's, it's the same in the state of Vermont. That's the way that I was in the House for two terms. That's the way the House was viewed. A bunch of hot heads. The Senate was moderate and could cool off temper and passion. And see, that's, that's another reason for also. The, the stated reason for the Electoral College is kind of a myth. The reason that it's often stated is that no, the founding, whatever the hell they were, founders felt that felt that um, that people were too passionate and were ruled by passion, and that they ha it had to be tempered, and that was why we had the electoral college. The electoral, and that's another probably reason for the electoral college. But the real reason, the way it was created, was out of this question about slavery, and it was the biggest pop. It was the biggest to me, the biggest hypocrisy, and the biggest contradiction in. Well, is really rather a good document, rather, you know. And it, it's, um, nobody seems to know that. Nobody understands that. There's all this discussion nowadays with, with new scholarship about that. Scholars would say, nah, the, this electoral college didn't have anything to do with slavery. There are people, though, that, like Eric Foner, who's the most famous uh, historian of the U.S., who says it absolutely had to do it. That's the reason for the Electoral College. There's another reason, though, too, because of this Senate thing. And this is how this plays in today. Is there any reason that we sh every state should only have two senators? It's not, that, that is not really at all based on the population of the state. Right. And it evens out, I guess, a state like I don't know, Vermont with a state like New York. Yeah. That's the idea. The yeah. California and Vermont yeah. would have the same idea. Well, could why not have one, though? Why did it have to be two? Yeah, I know. Just a random. No, but why, does, why isn't it based on a population? population? Right. Well, because well, the small states wouldn't have joined. Exactly. I don't, that's, I don't think small it's small states would not have a population. I'm sorry. Part, yeah. One piece is a population, which is right. California, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. So we shouldn't really have the people in the votes and anything. Exactly. Why? Why should they not be based on population? Because, because it would the be states, unfair. Yeah, I don't the think the states race. But what unites unfair. a state that makes it such a strong right? That's a good power, question. You know, so that everyone is equal. Every state is equal. I don't know. So it's based on states' that. rights too. It's based on the whole notion that a state has certain rights and privileges over the common people. You're going from a situation where the federal government had virtually no power and the states had almost all of the power to a situation where it was supposed to be fairly equal between the states and the federal government that's evolved since then. So in order to get the small states to join, uh, I don't okay, if, right. If right now Vermont has two one-hundredths of the vote in the Senate. If it was by population, it would be one 525? Why, why do we have such things like Vermont? I mean, I know traditionally and all that stuff, but I don't understand this idea you want of to be a the state. I don't care. I mean, do you want to know the ration, uh, rationale? Yeah, Maple A rationale, I mean, if you want to, I'm just arguing from the other point of view. If you think as each state as a small country. Yeah. If you do, I don't. I mean, if, if you think you of each state yeah. as a small country, and, and, and right. uh, in 1780 they kind of were, then you're, you're saying, well, these all these small countries are getting together and uh, confederating, and each one should have votes. You know, each but one I don't understand the votes. basis. I mean, I'm just right. saying I know. It's, I know. it's a way of thinking. I'm right. not saying it's I, correct. No. Right, I understand. It comes when the UN was formed. It comes out of the notion, I believe, of states' rights. I don't know why a state should have these rights. That was a southern position also. Then they go back to the colonies. Yeah. There were these colonies. There's colonies. There's a separate, you know, Maryland was Catholic and, right. and so on. And so right. They had there different characteristics and so on. Sort of kept, otherwise, you had to just, um, strip them of that when they set up the United States. Well, you did. A, a lot of ways, of course, the Congress is not based on that. The Congress is based on population. Maybe it should be just one man, one vote. I don't, I, you know, I don't. I think that's how historically 
But, go back to the states' rights thing. Yeah, I know. When you go back to the states' rights thing, again, the whole legal argument on the, on the part of the South, forever, if you want to think about it, it's now too, that they mm -hmm. think that they, that they have rights within this. They decide the gerrymandering, really, and they decide who votes and who doesn't vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Each state controls that. That's why the South, after the Civil War, was able to impose a poll tax. You had to pay a poll tax to vote. Guess who that hurt mostly? None. Black people. Black people had no no money after the Civil War or prior either. So I don't under. This has always been a problem, I think, within our the United States. I'm not certain I want to call it our country today. So, B, when your 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 argument that. Yeah, you know that there's I'm another just logical a argument. argument, right? I'm not saying it's necessarily exactly. mine. But if you take that one, I wonder because this was done when there were just the 13 states, right? right. So, like, what happens when the Dakota and North and South Dakota come along? Why are they two separate states? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Right. What distinguishes one from the other? Nothing. Maybe, maybe boundaries. Maybe boundaries like the Connecticut River determines the difference. I think that's surprisingly frequent. I've discovered trouble yeah, in the yeah. country. The states often conform to some sort of geographical mm -hmm. thing and or cultural mm -hmm. more than I would have thought of just by right. the And each and state has its own party. constitution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't be one state? Really? Really? Probably, yeah. Right. So I, know I, learned that the, the, I learned that the Electoral College was created in order to be able to overrule the popular. Yes, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, That's one reason. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Uh, Really, the elite. It's the elite would be able to make the final decision. <coughs> Correct. So that when you go to vote, when I first was voting after we turned 21, you would go in Massachusetts and you'd get a ballot that would say, "I vote for the electors of." Yeah. Yeah. But we were, when you go, you are voting for the electors. You are not directly voting for the candidate. And who do, mm -hmm. who are, who are or are not obliged to vote in particular ways. Right. In some states, you, they don't have to vote the way the public goes. Right. In many states. Many, in many states. Not, I believe in Vermont, they have to. But some states have. But so Florida doesn't get elected without what? already. What? How does a press? How did Trump get elected? Okay, so he one? got the key, the big votes. He got the electoral votes. He didn't get the popular, he didn't win the popular vote. But if you look at a state, for instance, the one that I know kind of exactly is Florida. Did he win Florida? Yeah. 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 Okay, because he won the big states with the big electoral votes. But if you go one man, one vote, Hillary Clinton won. No, no, no. It's, it, most states have all or nothing. Yeah, no, yeah, right. if you win off. Florida by 26 off. votes, literally, you win right, Florida. You, win the vote, right, you get yeah. you get all 25 yeah. uh, electoral That's votes. Cool. So yeah. California could go, you know, could have gone for uh, this was uh, Bull Gore. You know, California probably went for Gore by you know five million votes, but because uh, Florida went by 26 votes, so it was determined by the Supreme Court. Bush, Bush became president. So, so, the, so the problem with the Electoral College is, now, now. is partially the all or nothing. Right. When yeah. it takes right. off. Because, take off. because if, you, if you only think of it in terms of population, you know, of a popular vote, um, if and, and every state goes by the popular vote plus yes. two senators, mm -hmm. That's then close enough. It wouldn't be too far off. I mean, if you were just going by the popular vote, I mean, the two extra senators could turn it off one way or another if it were very close. Mm -hmm. But why would you have it in the first place? Why do you need it in the first place, the Electoral College? I'm, I'm, right? I'm, I'm just arguing yeah. arithmetically, that's all. Yeah. No, you don't. But are, you're sort of suggesting that it was a de by design. Yes. To allow the elite yes. to have control. Yes. Two reasons. Mm -hmm. It was created out of this, this racial, as racist and racial origins. However, it also has the origins, as Sally's talking about, that the other kind of reason that was given at the time was that the people couldn't be trusted to do it right. I'll say something else about the Senate. At the time of this Constitution, the Senate was not even elected by the people. Really? Right. It was elected from the legislatures. Each legislator met 
and he selected their senators. Awesome. That was an amendment later on, maybe in the 20s, yeah. during the progressive era. That's going back to Wisconsin. That's where there was a huge progressive movement. And the Senate, there was an amendment to the Constitution that made the Senate directly uh, voted for. That would have been why there's two. Mm -hmm. Isn't there also because there would have been facts. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're talking about You don't have a government after election constantly every three years. Right. So that, was a, that, was a, that was for the six-year term. Yeah. The Senate has six-year terms, too. The Congress so has two. What? It's so long. It's so, so yeah. long, and it yeah. builds in the idea that these people are rational and stable. Mm -hmm. It builds in the whole notion of an aristocracy. Mm -hmm. Really. And could you explain the super delegates? That also well, that's, that, that's okay. Yes, I, that try, kind I can of try to. That the election also. Yeah, I can try to, but that's not. Yeah. You've got to remember that that's a party function, mm -hmm. and the parties are nowhere in this constitution. Parties sort of grew in the United States, but they are private organizations. They're not. They're governed a little bit by the government, but they're not part of the government. They are. And that's why they can do whatever the hell they want to do, and they do. Mm -hmm. That's why. They, that's why I think. Well, I'll get into that later. But, but anyway. So the electoral college, I think, has two reasons. One, in its origins, is to keep black people in slavery, and the second origin is something. Are you okay, son? Cold. Oh. Um, <laughs> but the second part of that is that it makes the elite Senate really even are really in control of a lot of the decisions that the, that the House makes. And, and is therefore more, it's perceived that the Senate is intemperate, or that the House is intemperate. The, right? This is in the context, just let's, in, in a thought context, what is this in opposition to? The whole idea that we could have inherited a parliamentary government. Mm -hmm. So parliamentary government essentially says, if you have 7% of the vote, you have 7% right. of the seats in the House. And the thing about parliamentary government is that it, and it usually has a, a, a cutoff at 5%, but small parties yeah. who have 6% mm -hmm. are legitimate. Right. They are legitimate in a debate. They are legitimate to be interviewed. They are legitimate. And so in a parliamentary government, you get to be able to put ideas out not for which you don't if you have 49.9 percent because you're not legitimate mm -hmm. it's it's first past the post yeah. right so so that's what was chosen against is the is the parliamentary model and how many countries have that great well, Britain has it still right yeah does uh, germany have that uh, don't they all i mean i, just, I don't know if there's any like that there's one in england, one in england, 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 england was the only parliament yeah. The no, the French had a tradition of a parliament too. At that time, I don't know if it was meeting, was it? Oh, meeting at that time? Sure. What time? Sure. It was 1776, 18th century. Yeah, well, yeah, it was an old regime. It was a parliament, right, right, right. It goes back to the Middle Ages, I think. Yeah, it does go back to the Middle Ages. And that goes back to 1215. Right, yeah. Well, the British Parliament, you're talking about the Magna Carta? Yeah. 1215. I'm not certain, I mean, I suppose so, but that gave. That gave kind of the idea of a constitutional monarchy that was controlled by the nobles, that mm -hmm. Magna Carta did. What was legitimate? That's the question. Yeah. Like, we're not, legi we're not legitimate. There's nobody in this room that's legitimate. What are you talking about? We all should go to jail. Legitimate meaning part, who, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the, the model, let's say this, consciousness in this room in Vermont or whatever, but call it progressive, call it radical, I mean it has a range, that that is not legitimate in this country. We're talking about Democrats versus Republicans, right. period. And if you have another opinion, it doesn't matter. Right. And did uh, most uh, of the parliamentary governments or countries have, two-party is was irrelevant. Yes, yeah, so so there's many parties. Many you, parties. You, you, you but there many parties. Still, still the same way now. Yeah. Now, yes, but not here. Right, not yeah. ever here. I've often wondered why they opted for a bicameral system and not. Here, that's why, because they, they, they whatever, I don't like calling them that. The they wanted a <laughs> House of Lords, essentially, and they 
you can't, couldn't justify it really in a republic, because the House of Lords, I mean, remember that the basis of a republic uh, is that all men are created equal. So you can't have, you couldn't have a House of Lords, which is based on birth. That, that to me is the most progressive part of the U.S. Constitution, is that we did away with monarchy and we did away with aristocracy. We have wealthy people, no doubt about it, that's true. But people are not born to privilege in a republic. Can we, and then, then like, can we go back to Marx's yeah. question? Is, um, this was in opposition to what, in, in, in the, British, Par I know, the yeah. British Parliament at that time. Yeah. Could they also um, overturn the prime minister and call elections and all that kind of thing? They, 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 they had elections. They didn't know what they can now. That's one of my yeah. virtues. They're not stuck with this head of government for, You're right, for, term. Right, for now, probably eight years. I know. Yeah. Um, right now, the mayor of Burlington. I believe that the British always had some kind of a vote based on property people. Yeah. And that didn't get reformed. Well, I mean, could they change the government upon voting? Upon yeah, voting you, yeah I think so. But you couldn't but change they never the monarchy. Could hear. What? They never yeah. have right, because we don't have any idea of a vote of non confidence right. either. There's no, like in other systems, the parliament can get together and decide to boot out the prime minister in a vote of non confidence, but we don't ever. I mean, this is the closest, is what's happening right now in the, in the House is impeachment, <coughs> right? Um, which is, not, in my view, is not going to happen anyway. But, um, but there were, but this country, I think, the party system developed later. But there were numbers of reasons that it, they did develop and become really solidified. One of the main reasons was about this question of states' rights versus the rights of the national government. So there was a party essentially from a lot from New England um, named. They called themselves the Anti-Federalists. One of my heroes of the Anti-Federalist movement was Sam Adams, who was uh, uh, per, uh, part of the Adams family, but the most kind of radical, who argued that um, we should be against centralized power. That's, to me, that's totally legitimate. Yeah. We're talking about Franklin what? It's coming out. Of the, uh, Franklin, Franklin was on the side of the Republic. I don't know if he was a Federalist. I think he's a Federalist, probably. Okay. They, they, they came in and said something out of the time that it's overworking or something. The vent? It's blowing up. Yeah. yeah. It's a heat pump. It's a heat pump. And it's it's right the right control. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It needs to be clicked up or something. Could we? Anyway. But anyway, so that's a totally American position to be a, to be suspicious of centralized power. I am. I'm very suspicious of the government, and and that that probably we would call it a European movement, maybe of anarchism. Anarchists exist, of course, in this country too. But that came from our our history of a monarch. So the original founders, the most the most. Uh, um, radical of the founders was a guy named Thomas Paine. We all know him, right? Mm -hmm. And he wrote Common Sense, and he wrote The Age of Reason, and he was a, he he made girls, I think, corsets, didn't he? And he was a corset maker, <laughs> and he wrote all these pamphlets um, in urging Americans to try, distrust centralized government because of this crazy king that was governing the country. So the Americans have a much different tradition, for instance, than the Canadians. They like government, and they say one of their rights as a Canadian is to have good government. I, see, I don't believe there is such a thing, they except town parliament. meetings. There, theirs is a parliamentary system. Yeah, theirs is a parliamentary yeah. system. Yeah. But they have a slogan now, all Canadians are entitled to good government. Well, maybe. But you know, if once you have the government in Washington telling people like us what to do, I. I just think those governments have too much power. And therefore, that's Thomas Paine and the Anti-Federalists. That was one big discussion in the Constitutional Convention, which resulted in what? What, what is the amendments that deal with centralized power? Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. It's a very different, a difficult concept to communicate to people. Bill of Rights pertains to freedom from government. So you couldn't go and be an employee and say your boss is interfering with your freedom of speech. You don't have freedom of speech in, pu in private places. You have freedom of speech if that space is a public space. 
and that that is freedom from government. Right. I think that's great. But that follows the American tradition because, again, that's what I'm saying, that the, many of the anti-federalists argue that liberty comes from fighting with the government and, and keeping the government out of your life. Now, we hear that all the time, right? That can swing a couple of different ways. Yes, I know that. I know so that's what I'm saying. we can get into the whole thing about that. Go ahead, say so. I mean, I'm thinking about corporations and yeah. stuff. And I'm saying, bring on that regulation. You know, I mean, we're, you know, we're being, we're held, a whole country's held hostage. Right. So I say, you know, I, I believe that, I, I, I aspirationally, I believe that there could be a good government. Yeah. Otherwise, as I long as there are kill corporations. I, no. I need to at least believe that. What, what did you say? As long as there are corporations. If you, if you didn't have that, that kind of power exercising as much control as it does over daily life and the future of life. I think, I think, uh, I mean, an example is, did anybody watch Democracy Now! last night? No. Am I, I the know. only per Yes. Yeah, yeah, they did this I amazing thing on, you know, the great, this film that's coming out, The Great Hack. The uh, Big Hack or something. Is that the one about Cambridge Analytics? Yeah. About what? Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Now there's something that about means that. Oh, yeah. How can that be at all? Yeah. How? Can, I, I mean, I, I don't think it can. I don't think all of this can be dealt with. It's about it. Cambridge Analytica. And beyond. It's not, Cambridge Analytica is now just part of a, there are many of them. Oh, which like is what? Right. They interfere with the elections or something? Yeah. And yeah. the way they do it is by profiling. And then they yeah. find people yeah. who are suggestible and who are, what do they call them, innocent? Persuadables. Persuadables. Persuadables, mm -hmm. yeah. And they shoot some, some elect, you know, some messages to them, and 36 percent or something change. So change the, I mean, it isn't it our duty as citizens to kind of? I mean, you can make a case that yes, of course. I mean, you know, it's it's everything is very murky, but I'm just using that as an example to say that if. If anything might be able to put a little bit of a cog in this crazy, you know, this is now a real downward slippery slope. It, to me, in my mind, I think it would be the government. Not only, but there would be. But you gotta remember, the government is the, is the people that everybody seems government. to hate, like Donald Trump. Well, not this government. What about but right. Fidel Castro? But they, but that's the same yeah, one same thing with Fidel Castro. A lot of people hate him, too. Yeah, yeah what's a good what, government? What, what, uh, I know. What about Who's it? Who's part of your Wise guidance. I don't think that you should have an authoritarian in power to wisely guide you. I think you'd make your own decisions about how to be guided. But that, but that assumes that wisdom is distributed throughout the population. Well, I and think you're assuming is, that, that the you're wisest assuming it's person not. will be the one to get the power. Not, Which is not, never I, the case. I'm, I'm not assuming anything, but I mean, Plato's Republic was um, in charge and the people who were in charge philosopher were kings. the philosopher kings. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they had a, a larger sense than you, whoever. Now, you know, you that is that? very undemocratic. Yeah. But the question remains, for instance, let's just put it to, you know, bring it down to this, yeah. is why is Joe Biden continuing to lead and the polls? If you believe it. I don't believe it. Well, all right. Let's just say it's, mm -hmm. it's the case. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you have to ask about where is the wisdom that creates that, that phenomenon, right? Well, it's the wisdom of the people. Which people? What is wisdom? How do they know? Should we have another three-fifths rule or six-tenths rule or whatever score you get on your, your quiz? Your wisdom quiz. That's how much of a vote. That's, okay. that's how much of a vote you get. Okay. So if you want to take that further, is you know, right, how do you write the quiz, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But presumably there is a level of savvy, uh, of uh, uh, you know understanding of how the system works, which could be a decider of a proportionate vote. And then very, very stupid people. Are you advocating for that? I am proposing it as a thought experiment. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, that, that as opposed to assuming that wisdom is consistent throughout the population and that that popular, popular wisdom is what gets to make decisions that 
winds us up with Trump. What or are you saying? Biden or whatever. Yeah, you know, don't you think are, people are seeing Biden as a safe bat in the middle? Like no. sort of well, kind of the, no but the wisdom is he is most likely to be able to win over Trump. Mm -hmm. Is that wisdom? No, you know, is that like where is it coming from? Right now? I don't you know, know, what assumptions are, are well, we making? strategy, not wisdom. Wisdom has implications of good. It's called a strategy. Mm -hmm. That's what define wisdom. Yeah, right, exactly. You have to assume in a democracy, and maybe Mark is advocating not for a democracy. I don't know. I'm advocating a thought experiment. Okay, That All right. the question, the notion of generalized wisdom, which results in generalized popular vote. Yeah. Wait, right. and where does wisdom come from? I mean, they democratic. What is, what is wisdom? Bob Dylan's Right. Guy. Okay, I'm just going to read you the Declaration of Independence, the part that's the most, I think, moving. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Equal. The assumption of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, you can advocate that these are not true. This is not true. I think it is true. Or if it isn't true, that we better dump democracy. Uh, that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All people, okay. not just a monarch, not just the aristocracy, all of us. But that, that and that assumes, that, that assumes that, reason. It, it, well, maybe. Yeah. I was just saying as a thought experiment, yeah. you know, does that mean are all people created equally wise? They're no. equal. You can't shoot them. You can't bonk them on the head. Uh, you know they can. Everybody can bonk everybody on the head. But is there a gradient of wisdom that is assumed or not assumed? It is assumed in the in the Constitution. And that, the is, that is the no, gradient. It's, not it's likely. It's, it's, it's not. The assumed. assumption is no, that all. No wisdom is assumed. What? Does it exist? You can vote. No, 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 no. The assumption of the in Declaration of Independence and the Constitution was that all men, uh, and it was amended to include women, are created equal and have equal rights. Okay. Well, what is meant by created? What is meant by equal? What? <clears throat> Period. Nothing no, I know wisdom. nothing about wisdom. This is, a, this is, I think that that is, my belief is, and I think that the original founders came to the conclusion that to have a democracy, you have to assume that all men and women have the ability to gain wisdom because of their brain. Their brain is different than an animal's okay, brain. Okay, but that's, the, the, that's where the devil is in the details. Why? Because the, uh, they're, they, I agree that, yeah, I believe people are good. It's just a belief. Well, but this is equal. Okay, but so equal and have the ability to access wisdom, but the, yeah. it has to be offered. It has to be made available to everyone. It is. Made. It is. The internet, it's in there? You, you can find whatever you want now. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean, yeah. I mean, but where is this that's wisdom coming from? That's not wisdom. Though. No, it it's isn't. It doesn't say that. It says, it's though, not. that as for, it believes the Constitution believes that all people are created equal and have so. rights. It doesn't assume that they have wisdom, but no, that they're all right. equal. No, he's right. He, okay, well, he's fine. Right. Equal. Can, could I intervene and say that the most democratic idea would then be to elect people by lottery, where yes. uh, you, you yes. know uh, Take turns. Your, the people in yeah. your Congress would be chosen by uh, some process like Taking it out of a hat. Or a jury, like the Why, right. Why do you say that? Well, then it would be that would yeah. be the most equal. Some Whether institutions you're wise or not wise, rich or poor, male, female, you, you all have a chance. I they did that. I think that they did that. Implemented that true. somewhere. I read recently. And that's that's academic departments do at UVM. Where? Ac academic departments at UVM. Some of them work that way. So the chairmanship for the chair uh, rotates among. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the department. Yeah. You just take your yeah. turn. You have a turn for three years. And you didn't want to take your turn. Yeah. <laughs> right? Whether you want it or not. Well, well I have two things I want to add to the discussion. One is, as an educated, informed, rather wise woman that I am, when I go into the polls in you know my ward right here, and I walk into the school, and and there's like, you know, six issues to vote on, and different people and stuff like that. 
boy, if I haven't prepped for that, what? I am yeah. shooting in the dark yeah, here. I'm true. like, what? This language doesn't make yeah. any sense on the ballot. Oh, the, the referendum. You know, yeah. it's like if I haven't, and I do, I'll call up my city council before I go on. I'm like, let's talk about this thing. Like, I don't know. Like, do they why? call you back? They do. Uh -huh. They pick up the phone. Actually, I've got, uh, you know. Uh, Perry now, and and then they'll say, you know, or I'll call one of the ones that used to be and say, how are you going to vote on this? Tell me why. What are you doing? Because if I don't do that, I'm walking in just kind of going, f yeah. or not voting on that stuff. And some of the wording is like, very tricky, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Words, what you right. Say? It's very confusing, and even the names on the ballot, some of them, it's like, what is that position? I don't know. And I've been voting for, you know, whatever, 40 years but, or something. But, okay, so there was that, and then there's the other thing which I wanted to insert somewhere is, where did this fucking right to veto come in? Because the, our, the president, well, our governor, you know, yeah. they work their asses off to get something ready, and then the governor says, Bleep. "No, we're not doing that." And that pisses me but off. But it can be overridden. Yeah, if you have yeah. enough people, Two you thirds. can. Two well, thirds. and yes, and the presidential vetoes, all that vetoing thing. I think when did that start? Well, because I, that's the other thing, though, that this constitution was different than mm -hmm. it was different than other constitutions. It has this. Uh, president, the president in the United States has enormous executive power. Mm -hmm. Other places, they do not. Other parliamentary. They always have that right to veto. Them. Has that always been there? Or yes. It it has has been. And the reason why is because it's always been increasing. And it's always been increasing. Yeah. Particularly did after 9/11. Mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. Exactly. More, more power. Yeah. But guess what else it increased enormously? President Lincoln. He said, oh. "You're going to stay in the union," didn't he? Yeah. And that tough shit, if you don't want it, we're going to go to war about it, and you're going to stay. So when these types of, like this thing with, in, in, uh, in Iran, what? what should have happened with Congress, say, legally? Or well, it's, that's complicated, and I want to get somebody who could really comment on that better oh, than I okay. can. Uh, usually, and you'll see it, the, the enormous power of the president comes, I think, from the fact that he's commander-in-chief, period. He, did, he gets to... Uh, order of the troops around and the armies around. Congress has the ability, though, to withhold funds to do that. Mm -hmm. And remember, that was a big debate in Vietnam. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. I remember Senator Fulbright saying we should just vote against the budget. We sh should, but they did. I think they voted all the time to fund the wars. When did the, when did the action start with the president just says, "Never mind, I'm just doing it"? Well, uh, what it out, right, I, I think that came with the War Powers Act, but when's the last time that the Constitution was followed in regard to war? Yeah, the last World time, War II. World War II, 1941. Yeah. In that war, because we were attacked by Pearl Harbor, the Congress voted, with one, and one woman Next voted time. against it. That was it. But that's the last time. Since then, um, I guess what we've had in Korea was a police action, and it was supposedly authorized by the UN. Um, and then Vietnam, there was a lie that was told and police, at the Gulf of Tonkin. Police, what? Yeah. What? Police? What? Police, they call police, police action. action. Korea, yeah. Yes. yes. Korea. There probably should be a constitutional amendment as to how war is declared or how acts of war can occur. Because the Constitution was written, you didn't have to worry about nuclear missiles coming over. No, but, you had to, but you had to worry about war. You had to worry about yeah. war, but yeah. there was no immediacy right. to it. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, there wasn't something that happened that you had to react to immediately. Mm -hmm. so, well, well, it goes back to scale, I think. You know, the topic of this discussion of the group is municipalism. Yeah, and well, the know, overriding thing. Yeah. Right, and you know, you're saying even in Burlington that that's challenging mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, it's just, I'm just thinking about how it is. Can what would it take to have a truly informed yeah, you know, and process? Truly informed? informed process? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't think you can make people be informed. They vote. But if you want to be, you're saying you yeah. yeah, if you want to be. If, if, would there be some, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll do some research, which I do before each election, but um, that, it's not easy. You have to figure it out yourself. Well, so right. what if you're informed? Right. You know, I would hope that the results would be better. Why? People, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> if, if the number of people who choose to be informed is small, and the number of people who just go in there and Check whatever check they check. Box, yeah. It's not your information and your process of self-informing is, um, you know, theoretical. It's also a choice. Yeah. People, well, maybe people should be encouraged that if they don't know what the issue is, they shouldn't vote on it. Right. Well, people should do what they want to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But all kinds of party. crap happens in the so city. So what? Crap you happens know? when people do know what they want to do. <laughs> 
crap happened last it time was. when people voted for Trump, I guess. So I don't know if they're uninformed or not. I'll tell you so why wretched. I think they voted for Trump, and that is because their lives are, are freaking wretched. Their lives are wretched, and they didn't want to support the people that they thought made their lives wretched, which is Obama. Yeah, and they liked that, that his approach, Trump's approach, was to say whatever he felt like saying, and just be completely out there and whack a doodle, and they're like, I love that. No, I love no, that no. guy. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, I stood in line and got in to harass Trump when he was here in Burlington, and I was standing with people for four hours, and that's what they were telling me, all these supporters, like, oh, we, we love what he says. And I said to this woman, what do you think about how he talks about women? Oh, I don't care what he says about women. He's just, he's just, he's just so great. It's just his love contempt it. for government. Yeah, yeah. Really. That's right. His, yeah. That's true. He's, well, he got the anarchist vote. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know um, really why people, you got to remember something else. Eight million people voted for Obama, and then they voted for Trump. Yep. So we got to remember that. Their lives must have been pretty miserable under Obama. So it's also the same people you think voted? Same people you think voted? Yes, no, I know that. That's a statistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Wow. What did you say, Grant? Uh, there was the Senator Romano. There was voting for both sides at once. The Senator Bernie and Trump, wasn't it? And the no, no, Bernie and Reagan. When Bernie was elected mayor that year, the majority population of, Bur of Burlington voted for Reagan and Bernie. Mm -hmm. That's just it. And, and you know, there were interviews with people before the last election, and, and people were saying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm back and forth between Bernie and Trump. <laughs> I think it's totally reasonable. I think so too, actually. Yeah. Well, I think it's absolutely reasonable. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Huh? We're getting into the. I really don't want us to be talking about Trump too much because yeah. it's always yeah. that. It's disgusting. Everything always goes to that. Yeah. But I'm thinking about if we didn't have an electoral co college, we just had one person, yeah. one vote. Right. And then we're starting to also weave in the idea of wisdom. And to see that as, a, and to me, wisdom is is something that's cultivated. I don't. I mean, basically, I think it's sort of cultivated, and it's with help. It's either through education, through society, somehow some intervention of of something. I don't think we come out all you know brilliant and knowing. I feel <laughs> no, that we're not. we're not idiots, yeah. but. Naturally. So there's a lot of ignorance out there, but it, it's like one person, one vote, mm -hmm. without wisdom. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to imagine. Without wisdom. Is thoughts. that what's? It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that sort no, of what it's we have going on here? Yeah, no, who's going to define that? Well, but that yeah. has been a legitimate crazy issue. Yeah. I mean, with the voting age of 60. Well, it goes back to the 18th century. <laughs> And it goes back to the idea of philosopher king. Well, How could you have that justification for monarchy and dictatorship? I know. Well, exactly. But, uh, exactly. But, but in the Republic, it, um, Plato talks very carefully about how you create a philosopher king. But why and it you? isn't like I, I dub you philosopher king. There's a very careful education and selection system. And then, as a result of respecting that system, you say, OK, this person knows a lot. More than who I says? know about who says? The, the subjects who have participated <laughs> the in the platonic the, the, the subject, yeah, right. subject, I'm a subject, <laughs> um, who have participated yeah. in the in the creation of a platonic republic <coughs> in Plato. All right? I know, I read Plato. So, so so that's a system that we we are absolutely not talking about the creation of wisdom. And the, the thing about you know pre public education and all that is a very very ghostly attempt at providing some level of that. But on the other hand, then we then we say okay, one person, one vote. It doesn't matter what you know. And so that's all. There's a contradiction that has been uh, you know at the center of people's wondering about government that has to do with wisdom. It has to do with information. Has to do with class structure. Uh, no, I think but, everybody but understands saying, that. But what you're saying is that representative democracy doesn't work yeah, very well. It, it and be. maybe, maybe we're at this, you know, talking of municipalism, <coughs> maybe once upon a time when there were monarchs, people said, well, 
instead of a monarch, let's have represent, and you're giving all the reasons of the problems, they said let's have representative democracy, one person, one vote. And what we're beginning to say now is representative democracy is not working, and what we should do is have local democracy. And maybe if people are meeting in town meetings, face to face, locally, like we're meeting right now, for example, and arguing with each other, then maybe the people will have enough understanding, I don't even like the word wisdom, but I will have, will have enough understanding and to be able to comprehend what is going on, and they will be sensible about what they do because they are meeting face to face. And maybe there's a next stage after representative democracy, which is local democracy or municipalism. And that's what we're, that's why this thing is called municipalism. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying that representative democracy is not the end all of the most perfect government you can have. It's better than a monarchy, but it's just a stage. And maybe the next stage is local democracy where people can meet face to face and argue with each other and and you know and enhance enhance each other's knowledge or understanding or what. All right, I mean, those are two basic positions. You're, you know, basically, that's the argument. Should we be governed by a bunch of philosopher kings or should we be governing ourselves? Right? Well isn't the in between it? position is representative yeah. democracy. Yeah, which is as as Lincoln said, it's of and by and for the people. Versus having a king or a philosopher king determine for you what is good for society, right? But that of and by the people is not very, as Lucy is saying, is not very of and by No, the it people. isn't. No, it isn't. There's another stage. There's another possible historic stage. Right. I, but I, have to, I believe that the end of philosopher king type governments is at least begins with the belief that all people are equal. And then that means, that depends on what you mean by equal. That they have equal rights. And that's different from equal smarts. I, I, I don't question that at all. Yeah. Me. Okay. But, but people are capable. I mean, yeah. what we want to do in a certain sense is, cel I mean, on the one hand, we want to celebrate singularity. We want to celebrate the singular aspects of every person. And, and in a certain sense, that every person can contribute differently to, to the general well-being of everyone, depending on their inclinations or what their, their, their talents or what they want to do. So on the one hand, you, 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 you want singularity. But on the other hand, when it comes to making decisions, and sitting and talking, if people are talking face to face, <coughs> you don't have to have um, levels of wisdom. Right. I mean, th this level of wisdom. I didn't say that. No, I, I mean, you, I know you're doing a mind game. You're doing a mind game. One doesn't need, one doesn't need to have this so-called levels of philosopher kings in the mind game. I mean, we can, we can all be. I think what we do have is a critique of the assumptions of representative democracy. Yes, yes, yeah. Which, in my mind, is still better than the absolute control of divine kings. So but anyway, I think, so that was one of the original discussions, is how much power the centralized government was going to have over us. And there was a rebellion on the part of the anti-federalists uh, that said, no, all people are capable of living their lives in liberty and without interference from the government. So that was one discussion. And, but then there was always the discussion also of, um, also this, this discussion came up too because at least New England had the tradition of town meetings and direct democracy. That's direct democracy. That your town meeting is exactly what B is describing. I do these discussion groups in Richmond, for instance, and in Essex, and they are, those discussion groups are so much more civil and enlightened than in Burlington, for instance, which are governed by parties. Town meetings aren't governed by parties. They're governed by people, actually, like this group. You know, people getting to talk together. There aren't parties in town meetings. Do other New, New England states still have 
Yes. The town meetings. Yes, yeah, so all do. the New England states have town meetings, but as they went west, as people went west, I mean, first of all, they went and settled on these enormous farms by themselves in the middle of nowhere. And they, there were no towns, probably. And they had no government, really. They had no government, right. For a long time. For, for a long time. Um, so, but that was always a discussion between centralization and decentralization within the American psyche. That's why you have so many people, frankly, who believe that they have the right to bear arms. Because the government's not going to tell them what to do about their guns. Right? And also the idea that people had to have guns to oppose the national government, which was the monarch. Mm. So that it comes from a really revolutionary idea that people had the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment. It was like versus the government, right? You don't have that anywhere else in the world that I know, the right to bear arms, I don't think. Does anybody know that? Or, or Did New Zealand have it? They just re re revised it after the recent killing there, but there's a whole big thing about turning the guns, and did they have to before that? I don't, I don't know, but they're very it's a, I think, though, that New Zealand is a country, you know, which is, a, they're pretty groovy, but they're hunt, they, they, they either hunt or they do something with guns, yeah. because I have a good friend who grew up there. So there was always a gun aspect of that culture, and it wasn't to, like, hurt people. It well, was that's more true like here, on the too. Farm and, you yeah, know, was. Yeah. That, that's true here, yeah. too. I mean, it wasn't yeah. developed yeah. to hurt people. Yeah. It was developed to overthrow the England. That, that's true. And, but then, anyway, then the second big discussion always was about states' rights. But, and that, I think, comes out of, out of uh, slavery once again, because the states at the time of the Constitution, there was a big legal argument about, uh, about the Constitution. Was this going to be a compact of states that entered into this contract with each other, that they would have this constitution, or, and could, in other words, each state withdraw when they felt like it? That was a big argument in the Civil War. Does a state who entered into the constitution have the right to get out of the constitution? Does it? Does it? Even now? It doesn't now? say either way in the constitution. Doesn't say. It doesn't say. And that's what the South argued. When Lincoln was elected, they say, well, he's going to do all these awful things to us. So They're not going to let us bring, he's not going to let us bring our slaves to he's the West. He's going to take away our property. He's going to take, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's going to, but his, second, second what? Second Republic is arguing right now. I know. And that's, there is a Second Republic movement in the state of Vermont. And, uh, what is that? Not exactly. What? That Vermont should secede. Should secede. Because it, it doesn't make sense for, for, for Vermont to, <clears throat> the, um, you know, obeying the laws of governments that are trying, of a government that's trying to rule the world. And then there was a whole bunch of, like, there was a guy, uh, Thomas, Thomas Naylor was yeah, it. Tom yeah, Tom Naylor, um, and a lot of economics was worked out. Could Vermont um, survive as a foreign country, and then it would have to trade with the foreign country of the United States, okay. and it would have, it would have trade, trade laws, and it would have all kinds of, and, and should it then, uh, should it uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. associate, for instance, with the, the Northeast Corridor going up into Quebec, and that there would be this uh, country, a larger country, not part of the United States, how can Vermont get out of this situation where Trump is our president? Well, it existed before Trump, though. That yeah, it's before, well, before. Well, where Obama was our president. What? Where, where the, all the people who are trying to uh, promote American hegemony in the world with violence are our presidents. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's what the Second Vermont Republic movement was and is actually still. Well, about. there was, as Marcus pointed out, there. It's the Second Republic. There was the First Republic of mm -hmm. Vermont, right? Yeah. I all know that, right? The, Vermont did not join the Union. It was the 14th state. It joined the Union. Yeah, eventually. It didn't form it. It didn't, it was, it was the 14th state. First state after the 13th. Right, and it joined, but I remember listening to Senator uh, Jeffers, was it, one night, and saying why, remember when he became an independent? Yes. I remember that, and he, he said, forget it. And I can't remember what it was about, Bush. It was about George Bush, Senator, uh, Jeffords. Jeffords. He left the Republican Party. I think it might have been an education bill. 
No, no, no. This is much more important than that. What? It was. I think it was something about Bush Wars or something like that. No. Yeah. He left, and he said he gave a whole speech at the coroner in which he said. Vermont did not want to be part of the original union because they did not want to be part of a slave republic, which was the United States. Mm -hmm. So he said, I learned from that history that Vermonters are fiercely independent, and that means that um, I'm following that tradition. And also, you, I think we all have to remember that Vermont was the first constitution, its constitution eliminated slavery way before the U.S. did, right? Poorly worded, though. It was, it said, all men are born free. I just read that Massachusetts had it already earlier. Is it the first one that said, stated explicitly? Or I know, I maybe Massachusetts, slavery? but Massachusetts abolished slavery right after the revolution. After? Or right after, after the U.S. Well, before Vermont came in. Yes. That's part of it. Yeah, right. But Vermont's constitution says all men are born free, and they have the right to bear or not bear arms. In other words, they don't have to go in the service. So but getting back to the Electoral College, what it does by forming an Electoral College is it's taking the power of the ordinary people to elect the president, right. it's taking their power right. away from them, right. and it's giving it to, you know, 1290s, whatever, a hundred specific people mm -hmm. yeah. who among themselves can in a certain sense, I, I know you're shaking your head, I mean, it's giving the power yeah. to a hundred people right. who among themselves can decide, but it's not like there's just a, a hundred people sitting there and they're going to sit and have a power. Well, I mean, but, but, but a state who comes very close to one or the other, all their votes can go what we might say to the and, world. And that's America. the corrupt so variant so of the philosopher that? king. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that have been groomed by the parties to be the philosopher kings to, to make those votes. Not you, not the But, they're not, philo but they're not philosopher no. kings either. <laughs> no, but they are, in the terms of the uh, parties, they are given the status yeah. of philosophy. Because of their loyalty, yeah. not because of any, okay. any imagined wisdom. But Robin asked yeah. an important question about the parties, though, and about the mm -hmm. delegates. Yeah, super delegates. Okay, so those are the, these are the two parties. What I was trying to say is the two parties developed over the split between centralization of power and non-centralization of power over slavery. The party of slavery was which one? Which party? It was the Democratic yes. Party. Mm -hmm. And the Democratic Party was the party of apartheid and the party of Jim Crow. All of that were the Democrats. The Republicans were the radical Republicans who fought the Civil War against the Democratic majorities in the South. So that, there was a huge split between, for instance, it was Jefferson and his party that became the Democratic Party that said that um, slavery should be preserved uh, and that the, um, the right to maintain slavery remained with each state and not the federal government. And similar with the apartheid, uh, Jim Crow, that was the democratic view, because they had that state's rights position. Each state, according to the Democratic Party, had the right to determine those questions. Because the state was kind of sovereign over the federal government. That was all destroyed during the Civil War, when the South was beaten and occupied for quite a while. Therefore, the central government in Washington became more powerful than each and every state. That was when that happened, right? Anyway, so that was one split in the two-party system. Uh, the Democratic Party was the party of the South, essentially, until when? Until when it was with Roosevelt in the, during the Depression that the Democratic Party became more, whatever you want to call it, liberal about race. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was one, those were, the, those were the how the two parties developed. It was around slavery and it was around the centralization of power. What you're asking about is when did the parties, I guess, get to be really crucial in the development of American politics. And that was really over the Civil War again, those differences became really obvious. And then, but the parties themselves are controlled by elites 
And that, so, for instance, there is a rule within, but they're private. They're not necessarily even governed that much by the government. They are private organizations. And one of the things that the Democrats decided was that there were these super delegates, right? Like That's Howard Dean, convention. like Howard Dean, like the former bosses of the government here, Howard Dean, Madeline Cunin. Those guys are called super delegates, and they can go to the national convention and vote for whatever candidate they want to get the nomination of the party. Bernie had got that reformed, I believe, so that on the first ballot they can't do that. But on the second ballot, then the superdelegates can play the same role. And that's the plan. And the Republicans, that's, that's the, the plan, plan now. That's the plan. Well, I'll tell you what I think the plan is now, if anybody's interested, is that I think that the convention's going to be locked the way it was with JFK. Y'all remember the one with JFK? And then there's not going to be enough for any of them to, be, to win on the first ballot. And I think then the delegates are going to be freed, and I think that Bloomberg's going to get up. That's what I think. Oh. Another billionaire. Meaning Trump? No. Well, he, yeah. I don't know who will be. Who's going to vote for him? Maybe he's more liberal, I suppose, on certain issues. Isn't oh. it? Maybe they're Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Yeah. Bloomberg? Okay, so he's. The nice millionaire. <laughs> billionaire. He's well, not I, nice at all. But is the field um, going to get. You didn't see the quotation? Yeah. When does, when does the convention happen? The convention usually happens maybe in July. They're really. I think it's going to be really exciting. Where is it going to be? Oh. In, in other words, if uh, let's say if no one wins on the first right. ballot, let's say just Bernie and Elizabeth both have enough, let's say yeah. that together they would have enough. Right. For Bernie but they're not going to do that on the first ballot. No. No. Let's say that te yeah. theoretically there's enough right. for Bernie to win. Right. Okay which will not happen on the first ballot. Right. But then it, when they do the second ballot, the superdelegates can come right. in and not even make it happen that Warren's and Bernie's votes add up to a majority. But they guess what they could do? And that's his strategy. They could vote then for Bloomberg. Okay. Why not? Well, but, but if Bloomberg at that point has 10% of the delegates, and then you add the super delegates, it still doesn't have enough to win. Mark my words. Okay. He'll get them. Five dollars on that one? Yeah, we have a big bet on the competition. Should we all go to be, get to be delegates and have a party now? No, you know what I think we should? I would love to go. I would love to go, but that's hotly contested too. The uh, getting to be a delegate is by vote of the party, I believe. I think, that's see a, the party is a convention. You have to have been very involved, right, for you. For but the super delegates well, come in also at the at the time of the election, no? I mean, in other words, if uh, Vermont no, because they're only active in the to yeah. select the nominee. No, there's no delegates in the national. But convention. but then, I thought we voted for. I mean, the electoral college then convenes mm -hmm. and right. people who have been elected from each state yeah. represent Not necessarily. They are you know, general, I don't, ultimately? I think well, that I the think Electoral College is appointed by the party, which yeah. is a problem. I think that the party, the Democratic Party says, you're going to be in the Electoral College, and they do it by people who have done them favors, I yeah. would guess. Yeah, well, that's and they the don't. Super delegates and that was the whole thing in the last election. Well, should they have to abide by they don't. the vote? Or And some of them said, I, I will, and therefore I should be part of it. You know, I mean, that's a very, that's for state that to state. be confusing. Yeah. That's right? a state by state decision. Yeah, it's a state yeah. by state thing. For instance, in Florida, what happened with Bush v. Gore, if you'll remember that tedious, what, three or four weeks yeah. that it was up for yeah. grabs? The Florida legislature said, if you guys don't get it together, which meant the recount or not, we're going to decide it without a recount. And the they, and they can. And they, and they can. The Florida delegates or legislature? The Florida legislature who appoint, who decides who the electors, I guess, are going to be. They said, if, and remember it was almost tied. The, in other words, in other words, the, each state decides if they're going to obey the public will or not. And in Florida, and, and that usually, 
I think in Vermont, I don't even know that, but I think well, in Vermont that, that, in that it goes by the will of the people. They make that decision. Mm -hmm. But in Florida, they didn't. They, they didn't make that decision, and they could really do what they wanted. Well, it wasn't counted. Right, they didn't, do, they didn't have to do it. And remember, um, but there was a recount that was called. But before the recount, the legislature, the legislature said, if you guys don't get it together, we're going to just say who won. <laughs> Without a recount. And you remember in the end? Remember in the end what happened in that case? Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Yes, because they, but the Supreme Court the didn't really, the Supreme Court really didn't. They said, we're going to stop the count. We're not going to allow a recount. And therefore. And Gore stepped out. No, he didn't step out. No, but, but Bush had a slight majority. Slight, yeah. And so all of Flora's votes went, all 23. Then, because what Barry said is accurate, the victor takes off. So they got all the 23 and put them over the top. Well, the show last night on Democracy Now! Uh, about hacking, I mean, it made me think over the last election and, and, you know, the mantra that Trump would say and his audience would say is, put her in jail. Yeah. What, what, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, lock, lock her, her up. up. Yeah. Lock, lock her up. up. Lock her up. And that must have been part of what the persuadables, the people who were in between, thought, well, although when you asked, well, what did she actually do? She took the emails to her home on a server, blah, blah, you know, I mean, pretty mild compared to what's happening now, but, but if that was reinforced with uh, all sorts of uh, messages that they were getting over Facebook, uh, telling, Telling them that she is an evil person and has to. No, no, she, they, they didn't say evil. They said she was. Do you think she should be allowed to have a sex ring of children and a pizza <laughs> baller? Pizza <laughs> How about the Lolita <laughs> Express, though? <laughs> that's going to come out. The you what? know what that is? That's proof. Proof. Not. I mean, it's even admitted that there was a. Uh, uh, that, who's the guy that Epstein. Epstein was arrested for all these sex crimes? Is that the guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy who committed suicide? What yeah. about, what, what, what about that, the one who's on trial now? No, no, but that, this is the, yeah. the is that him? Is that Epstein? Yeah. That he had yeah. private airplanes and that Clinton flew on, Bill Clinton yeah. flew on that airplane like 27 times to go to this Lolita ranch. That's true. Hmm. I think so, he did What? He did it again. But, so, if, um, if there's, no, there's movement, activity to get rid of the Electoral College. Some, some people think, some people think that. Yeah, what would it take would it to make a difference? Enough? Would it be the same end result if, they, if all of the states said that the Electoral, that their, elect, their people in the Electoral College, it wasn't all or nothing, that it was all maybe. divided by... Right, maybe. And you have well, to follow, follow, yeah. follow well, that. I think, there, and I is think there is a movement, there is a movement yeah, among the states. That, that was what Robert Reich was proposing, mm -hmm. as a way of getting around a constitutional amendment yeah. to just obviate that. It, 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 right. would, it would be the same, mm -hmm. except for the infinitesimal time when the fact that, let's say, Vermont had an extra two senators compared to California, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it just wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. but I'm might, just saying those, the two extra senators don't make it exactly proportional right. to the population. No. But, it, but that would never happen. happen. It's just but there's another movement two to have the legislatures of a majority right. of of mm -hmm. states controlling the majority of the electoral college to say we will cast our, our electoral college votes will all be cast to the candidate that gets the majority of the nationwide popular vote. Wow. Yeah, there is that movement. And, and I think Maine even does it proportionally. Like if, if the Greens got 3% of the vote, then they say maybe 3% or 3 Well, they don't have enough, they don't have enough for it to be 3%. Right. But anyway, that there are, I think Maine does it more proportionate. It's not winner take all in Maine. Like nothing's going to change between now and November. Several states have no, nothing. Nothing. And never it's going to change. I don't think it's ever going to change. I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, I honestly think the United States has to have a lot more fundamental change than 
than this change, which is important, except that's really like a reform. Mm -hmm. I don't even think that's going to happen. I really don't. I mean, revoking Citizens United would be pretty That won't have any effect. That would take an overturn in the Supreme Court. How often is that going to happen? Except, except for Roe v. Wade, that will probably be overturned. Because, I mean, that's... Well, I mean, if, if Congress votes something that... No. That takes precedent over oh, what, what no, the Supreme Court No, over a court decision no, does not. I, no. you, what, what's the question? That Citizens United was an er erroneous decision of the Supreme Court, and Congress is going no. to say uh, money, uh, what is no. it, voting does okay. not okay. Money is not speech. Uh, the, legislature can say, not speech. the legislature can say the Supreme Court misinterpreted our laws, and so we're changing the law. So it's the way we want it, and that overrules the Supreme Court. Yeah. Right. But the Supreme, Supreme Court is uh, is the ultimate authority right. on interpretation right. of the Constitution, right. and that's what Citizens United is based on, the Constitution. But erroneously, I mean. In our uh, belief. Right. To, to, yeah, but sometimes you would want the Supreme Court to have the authority, for instance, in a woman's right to choose. It was the Supreme Court, not the. Um, Congress that, 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 that had right. that decided Roe v. Wade, not the not the Congress. Mm -hmm. Oh, incidentally, on another um, the Equal Rights Amendment is about to be uh, yeah, yeah, finalized. Yeah. Virginia yeah. Democratic I, I Democratic thought I Legislature. Inspired. I thought so too. I thought the same thing. So did I, but Revising. apparently not. No, I heard that recently. It was today. Did that today? Hmm? Did that today. Yeah, they did. Voting. They voted for it today. Yeah, I did. They passed it. Yeah. I don't know if they held the vote yet, but it was clear that it's going to be they held, and they've got the vote. Today. And oh. then what happens? And then, we, then it's put in the Constitution. So that's the final state that That you cannot discriminate on the basis of sex. I mean, doesn't it but have I, to go another step to no. actually? No. This is it. Well, somebody has to say, somebody has no, to it has to be. stamp it. You know, it has to say, it has to say. Oh, yeah. oh, big veto there from Trump. Somebody, somebody is No, you can't veto a Virginia statute. And then the states have to vote again. Again. Right. All of them. Start over. So will that about, happen again after a while? That's got to be sort of reauthorized every... No. no or does it then become in the it Constitution? Didn't, it didn't pass. It, it didn't, didn't pass in Virginia. I'm wondering if what happened was several states, when they voted favorably on it, put in an expiration date. And then the question would be, can they? There was an expiration date that had to go I think it was part of the... I think it well, was it's something yeah. the Congress then extended the expiration. Yes, but, but it, then it, the second one expired before oh. everybody had voted. So, so crazy. anyway, it's about 7.30, so I, I don't know what to say about this the Electoral College, except that it's here to stay, and it's mm -hmm. going to play a big part in the next election. One, one thing that I think would be interesting would be to go back to the original 13 states and see what their pop, you know, how, how, what would the breakup, the breakdown have been between slave states and non slave states in terms of overall population and in terms of electoral college votes? The, so the South had more population depending on how the people I know, that's what, right? I, that's what I'd like to see. Right, how that's true, that's, that is correct. That they had more, I don't know how many more, but they had more if you counted the slaves. I don't know that they did. Yeah, they did. They did. That's the point. They had huge amounts of places, like in Virginia, with more black people than white. A lot of places. And At the time of the Constitutional Convention? Yes, they did, because it was a plantation system. So you'd have these gangs of black slaves <clears throat> in certain areas and in certain counties. Gangs of them. Working, picking cotton, and especially after the cotton gin was invented. Yeah. But Anyway, the, um, if you go to this, how many people have ever visited the South? I'm probably like Baltimore. It's a hugely black city, isn't it? I mean, in the South, you see it much more than in the North even now, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, the, just quickly, I did want to mention that some of this was corrected, of course, uh, within um, the U.S. Constitution, and that's another whole discussion is on the Reconstruction Amendments, which, were, which reconstructed the United States after the Civil War, it's the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. The 13th Amendment, does everybody know what the 13th is? It's easy enough to see. 
a brand new book on it right now by this great historian named Eric Foner. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery everywhere in the Union. That was the subject of the movie Lincoln. Did everybody see that movie? Everywhere except prisons. Right. They said you could go to prison for and debt. Servitude. And, and for debt, too, at that point. You could be put... Yeah. Okay, the 14th Amendment, most of the well, 13th, is, they're all important, but the 14th Amendment is what's being discussed today because it said, this has to do with the right to choose, too. Yeah. It said that all persons born in the United States are citizens of the United States. And all will, persons. So then what's a person? A person is a person who is born, not a fetus. Yeah, a not a fetus. Okay. Oh. And that's the argument that was used in the in Roe. When Sarah Weddington made her arguments at the U.S. Supreme Court, she said, the 14th Amendment says, A, all persons born in the United States are citizens. Wow. I didn't oh, and the right That really thereof, should be right stressed. Thereof. That really, really should be stressed. Anytime that we have anything yeah. to do with, with abortion, we should really stress that. When stress they're talking about the rights of the fetus. The fetus does not have rights. The, rights, the, the fetus do not have any rights. That, they don't have any legal rights. None. So they don't. Well, they they don't have a right to be born. Right. They can be treated like rules. refugees. <laughs> but people get convicted of murder for murdering them. Not now. Not yet. Not yet. Not anywhere. Nowhere. No. But the, no, they're they're all they're they're They haven't come to. They, the but they haven't yet. come to the Supreme Court. But anyway, I want to mention something else about that, um, about, because that's the argument we should use. Whenever the religious people are getting after you about morality, we should be talking about legality. The legal rights of women are protected in the Constitution because women are born. Correct? I think. People. And they're people. Like people too. <clears throat> so they, those are the people that are protected and have equal protection of the laws are persons who are born here and are therefore citizens. Why was that so important after the Civil War? Because the status of freed slaves was very uncertain. What were they? They were three-fifths of a person. So the 14th Amendment actually is it has to do with no. the emancipation of black people. No, they were no longer, they were free persons at that point, so that you couldn't argue that they were three fifths of a person. What does that mean? Very, 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 I didn't say that, I said the 14th like Amendment guaranteed that they were What part is missing? People were walking around what? missing a limb. Like three fifths, I'm trying to visualize that. I know. Okay. What does that look like? And the last amendment, by the way, so there's the 13th, 14th, and the 15th which I guess is going to be re corrected also, which is that um, all black men got the right to vote. Right. Women, no woman got the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Black men did. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the suffragists were very pissed off about that, or the women who have been so helpful in the, in the abolitionist yeah. cause yeah. were betrayed. Right. Really betrayed on that. Yeah, I and mean, one of them said, "Why should those sambos be allowed yeah. to enter the door? And we uh, we can't." I mean, you know. In other words, However, though, she, that woman who called black people sambos, also had fought for their freedom. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, a good reason to be pissed off. I know, yeah. but it was it wasn't such a hot reason to blame black people about it, right? Or to yeah, call it wasn't them black, It wasn't black men that. Uh, insisted that only black men get to vote. It was white men. White men. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they did that, actually, when you think about it. Why, why did that succeed in a totally race? Well, it succeeded because the Union had succeeded, and those amendments yeah. were passed, probably when, when the Confederate States weren't in Congress. Remember, they had right. all left Congress. So it was passed without them. Yippee. And by giving the black men the same rights as white men in the South, it, it gave power to the northern position regarding the South. So you were never again going to be able to have a, a southern legislature say, we want to secede. Oh, Remember? they could say it. Hmm? They could say it. I mean, can, do I we, mean, have, you know, do we have the right to secede now? I mean, what would happen? Would, would the federal government bother to try to get us back in? Especially if, they, if we elect Bernie? They'd probably say, get the hell out of here. 
Right, right. So check us out. Say he's burning so not, burning so not so eligible. So so we're we're not the the now. Does it give the right to secede in the Constitution? No, it doesn't. It's no. an illegal it interpretation. It either. No, right. correct. It doesn't well. mention it. But guess what happened when they did? Yeah. Well, but when the South seceded. The president is the Civil War. Yeah. 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 I mean, Lincoln said, no, you're not going to do that. Uh -huh. Well, that was then. Now it's different. So, speaking of now, though, I know felons can vote in Vermont. But, did, yeah. but what? so, what does that mean? Did, if they're like still seeing their uh, parole officer, they're still like. Can they vote yes. once they're, wait, wait, they've wait, done wait. their time? They can vote from solitary confinement. Yeah, they can vote yeah. in prisons. In they here. can vote in prison. In yeah. prison. But it's only two okay. states. That's unusual. Only two states yeah, allow it. Which is the other the one? one. Yeah. Maine. Maine. Okay, but what if Florida is not? I don't see how that can be constitutional. Why? What? That, that, that states, that, that a citizen can be robbed of their right to vote. Because. Unfortunately, the yes, state yes. controls who votes, I each think also and every state. So after the Civil War, as a matter of fact, to prevent black men voting, that's when those rules about felonists, felonies, felony committers, Felons. could not vote. Felons mm -hmm. could not vote. It was after the Civil War, and many northern states didn't pass that law. But okay, it, but it's not mandated that there has to be a process to right. elicit all of the votes of people in jail. I mean, who goes yeah. and gets their vote? I tell you, does. A lot of people do. And yeah. maybe that's what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should do just to show that we're on the same side of those people in prison. Because Vince Saluzzi, when I was in the legislature, this guy that everybody hated except me, I kind of liked No, him. I loved him all the time. I liked him a lot. He was a Republican state's attorney. He's Really a cat, really a rogue, put it that way. But anyway, well, Cameron, I think. okay. So he went into the prisons and registered everybody to vote. Why shouldn't we do that? Uh, right. We could do it now. Yeah, in the prisons is not and the other thing, the reason I'm supporting Bernie too, and one other reason that is has not come out so strongly is that he thinks all prisoners should have the right to vote, including the Boston bomber. Yeah. I do too. Who thinks that? Bernie. <laughs> and he's taking that position and that if that comes out a lot, I don't know how popular it's going to be. Do you? Everybody's got a relative in prison these days. <laughs> That's true. Like it used to be. That's a good point. I hope they don't all vote for Trump. A lot of people have it in their family. I know. It's the life that you might think. I know. So should we do that? Yeah. Want to do it? We who? We what? Who? What? Should we go to the correctional centers and get people registered? You don't have to be notarized anymore to do No, that. I don't. Just yeah. You don't? You no, should, right? I'll do it. Well, it's With one you. thing to get them to... And then we'll take, get them absentee ballots. No, no, absentee ballot. Absentee ballot. They need to be provided absentee ballots. But we could get them those, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Can they mail them? Do they get posters? Yeah. Them? yeah. No. Well, we could, you know, probably... You, a per, a person fills out an application an absentee ballot, mails it in to the town clerk, town clerk sends it to them, they vote, they, they go through the process and they send it back to Is the town clerk. Is it Frank or do they have to put a stamp on it? They have stamps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's something else that came up in terms of that. Not the right to vote. Oh, I want to talk one last thing about identity. This has to do with, if you register to vote, I just did it for a kid who has no papers that prove that he's who he is. He has no identity papers because he can't get his birth certificate. I took him down to City Hall, and this we all should do. And I registered him to vote, and they don't even ask in this state yeah. anything. No ID. You don't need an ID to register to vote, but when, you get, vote. but when you get your registration back, it says at the top, Certificate of Citizenship, which means that they are certifying, City Hall, that you are a citizen of this country. With now you're certified. What? Will you have an address? Yes, but if it's a homeless person, you can use the post office. So then they have an ID at that point. They have, oh. sort of. Yes, they do. Yes, yeah. they do, Barry. It is an ID. It is accepted. It's always better to have a certified copy of your birth certificate. But many people, especially mm -hmm. homeless kids, they don't even know. Well, you couldn't get it anyway. I couldn't. I couldn't get it for that kid, even though I was his lawyer. 
Well, and he couldn't get it. Why? Because so I said no. Not, if he'd been it's simple, Sally. So I Texas, applied three Texas. freaking times to his home state, which is El Paso, Texas. Three times. No. No. You have to do this. You have to do that. Last time I was told I had to put it on professional letterhead. I don't have professional. I have nothing Whatever like that. Is. What? Whatever that it means embossed and looks fancy. Yeah. Not, not what you printed out on your computer like Martin yeah. or Sandy's or probably <laughs> half the other attorneys in Vermont now. <laughs> but they didn't define what that is. But no, they don't so define what that consists of. But if you know some kid or adult that's wandering around homeless and doesn't have his ID, but he has some kind of a residence here, you can do that. You can take him down for now. For now. If they hadn't been with you, would they still have allowed yeah. it? Or did it have anything to do yeah. with you standing there? Like, well, I was there with him, so I'm, I, you know, like, I glared at them. Weren't certifying him, right? What? I glared. Yeah. <laughs> but they required. I mean, they, there's no requirement. Good to know. You know. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.